What's happening is Sir William and welcome to the first annual Outside Adventure Expo here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Let's go check it out. So if you guys remember, I built one of these out of uh, wood and it looked like Dr. Seuss designed it. These guys here, these guys put together one that is absolutely legit. So we're here at the tailgate and go booth here at the Outside Adventure Expo. And I found these really cool uh, chuck boxes, it looks like, uh, outdoor kitchens. I'm gonna let Taylor show us. Tell everybody where these things are made at. We're 100% made in Colorado, 100% made in the USA, baby. Awesome, awesome. So what do we have? We have your Overlander model, which fits in the back of a lot of Jeep models. You got up here, you got all your storage, all your dry storage for your matches, spatulas, plates, napkins, all that. You got your single burner and all of our attachments we have online. But everything is modular, so all your cutting boards come out. And then you've got your cutting boards inside that act as dividers, keeping your breads away from your canned goods. Yeah, that's really cool. So, and, and you can put them on anywhere and everywhere you want, however anywhere you want to set it up. You want. If you want to set up so you got flatware and beans and coleslaw for your family, let's head to the back here. You can go all the way down the back, all the way around the box. You're getting ready to spice some steaks. You got your spice rack here. You're getting ready to rest some steaks. Throw that baby into the inside. Throw this baby on the outside. Like I said, this is our smaller model. We do custom powder coating in any two colors. We are an official NFL product, so we can do any team markings, any team colors. And then if you take a look at our realistic view back here. Okay getting some breakfast done here oh man look at that huh and this is your full setup you got all your storage inside all your storage up top you got your blackstone griddle off there to the right so that's what i was going to ask you is how much weight these things could hold but i mean that's a that's a pretty legit blackstone right there on the side it's so it can hold some some pretty good weight on the sides there yes sir our boxes start out at 55 pounds and 70 to 75 pounds just depends on how you load it if you're going to load a lot of cans i suggest putting it on the tailgate first but do it how you want i would also say our smaller box fits in the back of jeeps our larger box fits in the back of a truck we got 36 by 18 by 18 46 by 18 by 18. But if you want to save all that storage in your vehicle. We also have a swing out hitch. Look at that. You can put that right in any two inch hitch receiver. Nice, and just carry it on the back. Exactly. That's really cool. But you get to customize how you want. So you get this unit right here with the three cutting boards, serving inserts, custom powder coating, and then you customize it with your grills, griddles, stoves, sinks. Anything that you need, we have. That's awesome. And where can they find you at? Uh, Tailgateandgo.com. Remember, we're family owned and operated. We're located in Colorado. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Perfect, appreciate it. So sticking with the uh, outdoor storage solutions here, we have the dirt box gear. And this is Rod. Rod, tell us what we have. We've got our power unit and okay. our fridge slide and, and, and uh, <laughs> stove slide unit. That are all nice. That are all 14 gauge stainless steel, 500 pounds rated slides. And you got power to this unit, we so do. that's coming from what we're calling our juice box, okay. which is which is a 170 amp hour lithium ion battery, a 2,000 watt inverter, and DC DC charger that charges off the vehicle or solar that powers this up. So if you ever go camping, you have propane stoves, and it's too windy or too cold, they don't work. You don't have that issue here. You just plug in your injection cook cups, cook whatever you want, run your fridges off of it, run your coffee maker off of it, your blenders, whatever it is that you want to run off of. Nice, it. and induction is far more efficient than uh, propane anyway, so that works out good. And show us the, the drawers here. Like, 
So, these latches are really neat. So yeah, you can't so these just are, accidentally open these things. No, you cannot. These are spring-loaded Southco latches. Okay. And then epoxy-coated steel drawers. So this thing's not going to corrode on you or anything yeah. like that. Same thing. It's got a you know two-part uh, Line-X coating on all of the uh, components. This particular unit is color matched to Jeep Mojave. So... And you can get them whatever color you want or right yeah all the ones you see around the display are actual jeep factory colors that we color match in house so you have billet silver and sarge green and that that uh, gray color there is the gray color of the rubic of the rubicon there that rubicon actually has rubicon red in it that's yeah. been color matched to the rubicon dashboards that's really cool yeah. so the diff the only uh the only difference between those is the entire power unit in this JL has been incorporated into the front seat delete, so it's under the floor. So you still have all of the available storage in the back, as well as behind the seats where the original seats were. So it all it all bolts down to our plates, which you know bolt to the floor, which are either you know, these are sized to be in in a, a Wrangler or that you didn't want to remove the seat from mm -hmm. but you have the option of removing that seat. so you guys make the plate so, systems too correct yes oh, so you're wow. manufacturing the plates that go into the bottom of both jk's and jl's to make them flat yeah correct. right so you, the uh the plate unit underneath of it is bolting to the factory bolt location so there's no modifications to either jeep jk or jl just literally take out the, the carpet liners in them the factory tie down six point tie down course those fasteners go right back into the plate which has the appropriate machining buildups to make it flat with the size and, and literally bolt down our boxes to that plate nice and what kind of material is the plate system so the plate system is all made out of russian birch and it's all coated in polyurethane which is basically like a line liner. yeah line okay. coating and uh and that goes through our fat our finish department our flatline finishing applies all of those coatings and uh, and then the same with the top plate it's got 14 gauge stainless l track in it so if you wanted to strap down some additional you know makes it real easy strap. yeah just strap it strap it all down and as well as if you wanted to it all depth wise all fits with the seats in place and the rear seat so if you wanted to get rid of it you just unbolt it and slide them out it's completely it, removable yeah, leave the plate or if you change you know you buy a new uh you know new jail take it two with years you. from now take yeah. it all with you you know wow, take, the, really take cool. the boxes with you and you haven't modified the you know the factory you know put all of your factory stuff back in it your carpet kit back in it you haven't modified anything that you can't return to stock that's really you know, neat so. now of course we looked at the big boy which was the uh the power model right now what sizes do these come in so this is this is the three drawer unit stack okay. that comes in. That's a shorter unit that would actually be just at rear seat height. Okay. So you, we got those people that want to see over the back seat still. Yes. For us, it doesn't work because we're all running 40s. So no, you can't see it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, so, uh, so in these two sizes, it's 38 wide when they're combined to it to exactly fit in a Jeep opening. Same thing. The only difference being is when you increase the height size, it allows us to use the 45 liter fridges instead of the 30. You know, little, so a little more capacity in that. Same, same exact construction, just slightly larger in its uh, in its height footprint. That's awesome. And best of all, tell us where these things are made at. Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona, yeah. right here in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. Well, listen, I really like this. Where can they find you at? Dirtboxgear.com. Perfect, man. Thanks for showing us around. So I'm here with Pete with Peak to Peak Off Road. That's uh, that's kind of a mouthful, a little yeah, tongue twister little there. Bit, right? Tell us what you have, Pete. These are uh, our Forerunner 8-inch drawers. They bolt right in using an integrated base plate that bolts into factory mounting position. So um, super easy to install and remove. There's no guesswork in it. And then these utilize 36-inch lock-in, lock-out slides that are heavy duty and can support around 400 pounds. We've got a cutting board slash table, prep table. Um, routed into a channel and then we've got dividers that we can take in and out depending upon the configuration sweet man yeah and so you just take the carpet out and then you find the bolt locations and you just bolt it right into the factory yeah, stuff which basically. means that it can come unbolted too yeah yeah it takes about 10 minutes to install it or uninstall it um, we've got really removable uh, easy to remove drawers they just use some bolts that tie in from both sides so it's super repeatable and you don't have to worry about wearing them out 
Um, and then we also offer this same drawer system in a six inch tall configuration. If you want a little bit more room up above, don't feel like you have as much stuff. Um, so we're just trying to bring really high quality drawers that are CAD design, CNC cut, built in house um, for a lower entry price that's more affordable. And then we also have a triple drawer system. Okay. Um, and then you can add dividers if you want in the cutting board and you can buy them raw wood and um, finish them yourself or you can buy them uh, Raptor line from us. Awesome, and how far back do they go? Uh, they go all the way to the second row seat. Okay. And they utilize the maximum amount of space possible. Awesome, man. Where can they find you? Peak2PeakOffroad.com or Instagram, Peak2PeakOffroad, Facebook, Peak2PeakOffroad. Well, you guys have heard me talk about Tread Lightly before. I'm here with Matt. Matt's going to tell us what Tread Lightly is, who Tread Lightly is, and what Tread Lightly does. Well, Tread Lightly is a nonprofit, and our focus is keeping trails open and accessible, uh, especially for motorized use. Uh, we do that really through three main things. One is through stewardship efforts. Uh, so boots on the ground, work on trail systems all over the US. Number two is through educational programs. So we have everything from kind of people that are new and, and look, looking for a one-on-one -on -one type course um, on off-roading all the way to our master tread trainer program. And then the last piece is outreach. So hanging out at events like this, getting to talk to the consumers uh, that are out there uh, on the trails. So uh, we're based here in Utah, uh, but like I said, we have national reach. And uh, this year we'll probably do about 35 stewardship projects all over the country and uh, plan to be at about 25 different events. That's awesome. So cleaning up trails, helping to improve trails and then making sure people don't tear up the trails right <laughs> all so of the above if if you had one piece of because i know there's a couple different principles to tread lightly yeah. the most important principle that you could tell somebody about tread lightly what would that be i think it's the the d of the tread principles and it's the do your part do your part you know, we all have a really important part to play in this a lot of people look at public land as being their land um so the one thing i like to say is you know, back years ago, there was an ad campaign for membership has its privileges. Um, I like to think of it from ownership has responsibilities. Um, so, you know, ownership does have responsibilities when it comes to trail access. You know, all of the all of the hashtags we like to use. You know, if you uh, if you pack it in, pack it out, leave it better. Um, that's how everybody can do their part to make sure we've got trails for generations to come. That's awesome, man. And how can people get involved? So the easiest way to get involved with us is go check us out on our website. It's treadlightly.org. Uh, we've got opportunities on there for memberships, donations. Uh, but the other thing we do is if you become a member, the last question we ask is, are you interested in helping with volunteering at events? So um, that's a real important way that we pull volunteers to keep our stewardship projects happening. That's awesome, man. Well, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Absolutely, anytime. I'm here with Nate at Artec Industries, and he's going to tell me why aluminum skid plates are better which by the way look at this <laughs> this is a tacoma if you can't yep. tell this is the tacoma we also have it just very similar for the forerunner as well too this is a grade of aluminum called 6061 um, it's an aerospace grade one of the nice things about 6061 versus other grades of aluminum is that one it has a stronger surface tension on it so it's more like steel in that when you hit it it's not going to gall up as much it's not going to like stop you as fast it's it definitely has a higher surface um, structure than that and it also when you do hit it it actually will give a little bit so say this is like flat it'll pop up a little bit if you're on the rock and then it bounces back to flat whereas if on a steel one you hit that it's going to stay dented forever it'll just dent back and like and then you're just totally dented all the time these actually pop out so it's really nice your your belly pan after hitting it many times will still have the same structure the same shape it'll have some more gouges in it but it's it's a lot nicer plus you don't have to nearly have as much maintenance with this because it doesn't rust right uh, you don't have to you know you don't have to paint it all those things are great things and it Plus, looks pretty it's pretty and it's about a third of the weight of a steel equivalent so that's, and that's really the big nice. thing because you got to take all this stuff apart whenever you do maintenance now i see here though that you've actually got some access holes here so yep. i can your, do all my oil changes and everything oil change and oil filter right there yep easy you only have to remove those two plates so that's really nice um but one thing people don't consider is when you add a lot of weight to your vehicle you're also putting a lot more stress on everything else all the components all the components you're everything on your vehicle has a lot more stress so keeping the weight down yet having something strong and then having the kind of assurance assurance that you're like I'm gonna get out of here because 
I'm protected. That's peace of mind is is worth yeah, it all. Yeah, not worrying about those uh, noises that you hear when you hit those rocks. Exactly. Is really big deal. Yep. Well, that's a really cool thing. But I think my favorite thing is right there. Yep. Yeah, made in the USA. So tell us where you're at. So we're in North Salt Lake, Utah, just about 15 minutes north of this show right now. And it's all made in USA of USA components and USA materials. And uh, it's great. We all do. We have great welders there. Everything's, uh, this has a lifetime warranty on it for the original really? owner. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So That's if this awesome. fails, the Brit, you know, if any of the welds crack or anything like that, lifetime warranty on it. Dude, that's really cool. How can they find you? They can go to artechindustries.com. Neat. Facebook, Instagram, all Same that stuff thing. too? Same thing. Industries, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. All right. Go check them out, guys. All right. So as you guys know, I'm looking for a tool roll for Apple. Apple, okay, so the idea is to carry enough tools to basically rebuild it and Adam here at step 22 has What yes. he thinks to be the solution, right? I think this is the solution This is after years of my using a black hole tool bag every time I needed a wrench I would dump out the whole bag to find a wrench and deal with having to put it back in so after years of that I said a tool bag I think is the best way to carry tools but a tool roll and pouches is the best way to keep your tools organized so let's marry the two together I like it and when we did that we came up with the pangolin tool roll so titled pangolin tool roll but as you see it really starts acting mostly like a tool bag and the one we've got rolled out here uh, pulls out you're gonna see uh, the way you're able to keep everything easily organized so the first thing I'll show you is the wrench roll the wrench roll will allow you to keep all your wrenches organized both from you know long to short and the little pockets here I use for my hex keys so that's good management for that and I'd say the best way to use your wrench roll is off to the side it is hook and loop compatible so you could attach it to the main body but it gets to be a bit too much so you take your wrench roll use it off to the side I'll start down at this end. Okay. The two small pockets, we put the zipper on this side, so your little items, you can just dump them onto kind of your built-in work mat. When you're done using your little items, it's easy to slide everything and zip it up. Now, if you look here, you'll see a full-length zipper. I use this for my emergency cleanup rags, right? These rags would normally fill up a bunch of volume inside the pouches, so this allows you to just kind of spread that load along the whole run. Moving on to your next two pouches, they're hook and loop, so they're removable, swappable. You can take one with you if you only needed a few tools. You could add another pouch, you could add another wrench roll. Basically set it up best for your use. The bag it now doubles as a little storage garage during use. So your little items, right, the stuff that you may lose on the trail or the 10 in the millimeter. Or whatever, 10 millimeter, <laughs> right? You, yeah. you still may want to carry two, right? Because they, they find their way who, who knows where. Uh, but now you are you can work out of the bag that's, that's attached here. Um, grab your tools, store them here. When you're done, all your tools are in one place. You set those back into uh, in your pouches. You get your wrench roll, set it back here. And this is the roll part of it. So you're going to roll all your tools to that. You take the bag. Go right over like so. Wow. Now you're, right, now you're all in there. Now you got a little bit of slack here, right? So yeah. we got this nifty hardware. So that way it piece, fits without right? cussing at it. So if you get a close up on this guy, you'll see that this there's tension on a cord and pulling these like so actually takes the takes the slack and the tension out, tightens that top up a little bit. Now you got a tool back. Dude, that is uh, that is quite nifty there. Yeah, because you're right. I've got a I've got a tool bag now. Yep. And trying to find you know the 10 millimeter wrench. Yeah, where is it? Where, where is hole, it? Right? Yeah. One more thing I got to show you. Okay. Let's say you're gonna leave it set out for a while, right? Uh, and and you're not needing to use this because it's maybe on your workshop bench or something. We've got a roll and stow feature, so you take this bag and you roll it up, and you'll see this little red webbing with this hook. That allows you to to slide that guy in there. Now that's out of the way. Right. Nice, and now I could hang it up we by had, this we had, thing here. We had a third handle. Now you don't. You want to move it from place to place. You don't have to put it back into the bag. You could take those two handles and, and just carry it over to the next area. So if you're there. doing My something with wheels, yours, fix yeah. mine, then, then fix yours, no problem. Yeah, yeah. dude, that's so really that's, neat. That's a penguin tool roll. Sweet. Where can they find you? Step22gear.com. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. So I'm here with Rob, the Overland Gear Guy, and his stuff comes highly recommended from many different people I've talked to. So let's take a look. Tell us what you got. Okay. Um, first of all, a little bit of background. Um, 16 years law enforcement, kind of got out of that and then started making police, military, emergency services stuff. So they've been doing that for 30 years and then found out about the Overland world. Um, <laughs> and I love it. You know, we, we have the van here and stuff. And, now, and, uh, this is a this is a full-time traveler in itself yeah, right yeah. here, huh? Yeah, I mean, we, we got everything we need. We got the Zamp solar, the fridge, the fresh water. Um, we can we can be on grid for a long time. You know? Awesome, awesome. So, but uh, 
having that kind of gave us a whole bunch of ideas, um, you know, for, for, for stuff that is really needed inside the band as far as, you know, storage stuff. Um, we're kind of known for the, uh, the, the seat organizers. Um, we got, I think we got seven different models online, but, you know, here's a couple of them. These uh, will fit other things like Tacomas, um, Tundras, uh, Jeeps, and stuff like that. And then we have this one. This was designed a little more for tools. Um, people said, like, yeah, I don't need all these little small pockets, but, you know, I want all my tools right together. So we uh, we, we went in that direction. Um, something that's, uh, for, for the van, you know, any, anybody can use it, but like the, the smaller vehicles, like the Jeeps and stuff, they don't have a whole lot of uh, cubby space there. So, but... But the vans, they, they've got a lot of a lot of room here, so we make uh, different uh, different organizers that they go in there. So when you open the door, all your receipts and whatever just don't, don't fly, fly away. Yeah. yeah. And you also make these shades right here for the van guys. Yep. Yep. Um, now, do you make them just for vans, or are you making them for other stuff? Uh, you know, we, we've kind of done them uh, just a little one-offs here and there for for, okay. for different things. Uh, we do do them for trader uh, companies and stuff, local manufacturers. Um, okay. Things like that. Uh, most of the time, we use the Havelock wool because we really like that. It's, it's great insulation properties. The, uh, the Max fan cover up there that's got Havelock wool in there. Oh, it nice. Just magnetizes up there. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Really nice. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that's know. really cool, man. So you've got a storage solution for everything. I see over here you've got some cooking pouches. It looks yeah, like yeah, some roll up, uh, roll up utensil organizers and, and stuff. Different sizes. This is 16 by 20 vertically, 16 by 20 horizontal. Uh, this was this was the first style of uh, um, utensil organizers that we ever made. Guy in Arizona says, "Look, this is the space I have for my trailer, the front of my trailer, um, and here's a picture of all my utensils." He says, "Just make me something." And uh, so he made it, he loved it, and, and showed it to other people, and they loved it. So now we, you know, have that model, and, and we got a few, I think we got like six or seven utensil models um, out there. So. That's really cool. Now, these look like heavy-duty storage solutions. What it kind is. of material is this? So a lot of it's either a Cordura 1000 or a polyester 600, 600 by 300. Um, so it's durable. Um, I've, I've been doing this over 30 years, so um, lifetime warranty on everything. So. I'm not scrapping your on pouches. nothing because I don't want it coming back, you know. So there's lifetime warranty. Yep. So if these things tear, rip, yep. any kind of holes or anything like yep. that, we'll you're covering we'll it. We'll take care of it. Wow. So, yeah. Now this is my favorite part right here, Rob. I'm going to show everybody. These are all yeah. made in the United States, they right? Are. This and is not imported stuff. Nope, this is nope. made not, right our, here. Our, our, our uh, manufacturing is five minutes from here. Literally. We're in Salt Lake, North Salt Lake, just on the other side of the line here. And that's where it's all made. That is awesome, man. Well, this is some great looking stuff. I can obviously tell the quality of it. It's hard to tell you guys or show you guys, but I'm telling you by looking at it all the way down from the zippers all the way up to the material that it is. I mean, just really cool stuff. Anything that you want to hold, carry, put, you got a place for it. Where can they find you? Uh, Overlandgearguy.com and same on all the social media platforms. And uh, all our new uh, new product releases and stuff are on Instagram. So Instagram slash Overlandgearguy. Awesome, Rob. Well, I appreciate you taking us all through. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm here with Mario with AT Overland. And check out these really badass truck campers that they build. Now, this is uh, the 5010 camper on the uh, Ram 2500 on an 8-foot bed. Uh, the full AV XL package on 40-inch tires double fuel tanks, 1100 mile range. It's an overlander's dream. It's a really nice rig. Now take me through the back here. So this is a flatbed, right? Yeah, it's a flatbed system. It's a two part system. So you have what we call a tech box right here. So the tech box is a little bit lower in the frame. Uh, it gives you a lot of storage in here. You could have a dropout slide for a fridge and a variety of other things. The other side of this holds the spare tire. So okay. you need a lot of space, a lot of real estate to hold a 40 inch tire. And this is a two-part system. So from here up, that's a camper. From here down, it's a flatbed. So you have uh, four loosening points. You loosen that up, put some jacks in, you can take the camper off. You have a full utility bed on there with uh, aircraft L-Track for cargo restraint. Nice. Yeah, so if you wanted to haul motorcycles, bales of hay, goats, whatever, good to go. Nice, and inside here, I mean, this thing is, is very well built. It's all yeah. aluminum? It's all aluminum. You're looking at about 500 pound uh, payload on this. We're not payload, but 500 pounds in this system on the truck. 
So wait, this whole thing only weighs 500 pounds. Yeah, really light. Holy cow. Now, compared to some of the other camping options that are out there that are 1,200, 1,500 pounds, yeah. this is, I mean, this is extremely lightweight, which is yeah. easier on everything. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's less work for your drivetrain. It's it's easier on your mileage. Yeah. And so you make, obviously, this flatbed version, but now do you make drop-ins for regular trucks, too? Uh, no, we no. do not. No, okay. we make toppers for trucks. So, so you make a topper. Yeah, so come over here and I'll show you one of our toppers. Okay. So this is our summit topper. So you're maintaining the factory bed. So by maintaining a factory bed, you're reducing your cost of investment into a topper. So this is made from 5052 aluminum. It's got an inch of honeycomb composite in the walls and in the roof. So that provides natural insulation and rigidity to the system. So in the back, here you go. Okay. You get a full stand-up system in here. You can leave your bedding in place on the bed and just pop it up out of the way. And now your full truck bed is restored to you. So now you have all of this space. Wow, just by popping this up. Yeah. And then of course you can sleep on that. And exactly. Do you, you can need sleep two people up in here. What's nice about this system, Will, is that you can still have the bed deployed. Somebody can be asleep, but we got enough room to get out here and not disturb the other person. Right, right. Yeah. Rather than have to climb down a ladder like you would for a, uh, a, a rooftop, rooftop tent, tent or, or something some like other, that. Some other toppers in the market space, you have to move a bunch of cushions out of the way and then so you have to disturb the other person. That's really cool. And then yeah. of course you got the L-Track over there too for some more tie down solutions. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of L-Track. We've got, this is all Velcro compatible material. So we have pouches that will Velcro right to the sidewalls. It's really And the really whole nice. thing's made out of aluminum and you said it's actually insulated too. Yeah, because you have an inch of honeycomb uh, composite in the walls. So it provides an R value and also our windows are double pane acrylic. So wow. you don't have the thermal bridge that you get with single pane glass. That's really cool. So this is just gonna go on just the same way like a Lear top or yeah, like any, any of those cap. other fiberglass truck caps would. Exactly, yeah, it bolts down to the, to the rails. That's really neat. And you make them in various different sizes for six and a half foot, five foot, what? Gladiator, five foot, six foot Ranger, five foot, six foot Tacoma, Colorado, Frontier, five and a half foot F-150, Tundra, GMC, six and a half foot Ram, F-150, so GMC, you got it. 675, which is F-250, F-350, and we also make an eight foot that fits all of the eight foot models. As you guys know, we truck camp sometimes inside the Tundra, and we've got one of the traditional fiberglass caps. I would much rather have something like this. This is a far better option. So here's an Atlas model. So this is a little different. It's, okay. It's a vertical pop-up. And this one's been equipped with the Goose Gear interior system. It also has a National Luna fridge freezer. So this is a split unit. It also has a stove that slides out underneath in this combo slide. We've equipped this unit with 170 watts of solar, a lithium ion battery, and a National Luna DC to DC charging system. So this unit's been sitting here for two days, fridge running nonstop. Our main battery is at 12.6 and our auxiliary battery is at 13.7. It has not dipped below Can't beat that by cranking it up. No. Not Man, either. that's fantastic. So yeah, so once you get one of these on your truck, the possibilities are endless of how you want to uh, outfit it. And like you said, this one's popped straight up, which is uh, pretty cool too. Yeah. So that way you get even more room up there at the front exactly. there. Exactly, and then this one has our thermal liner. So this is a thermal liner that's made specifically from 3M Thinsulate. So it gives you an R value in the tent. So if you stepped up inside here, Will, you would find that it's actually cool in there even though outside your tent is like 90. It's yeah. 97 today, I think. Really? Yeah, wow. it's pretty warm. And best of all, where are these things made at? We're made in Prescott, Arizona, the mountains of Arizona. It's a beautiful place. We've got yeah. a really nice little factory and a good crew. That's fantastic. How can everybody find you? You can find us at atoverland.com, so alpha tango overland.com. You can find us on Instagram at atoverland. We also have a users group on Facebook, AT Overland Toppers, and 877-661-8097, toll free. That's how you get us. Perfect. Check these guys out. Fit and finish is always pretty on Goose Gear stuff. The Outside Adventure Expo offered an outdoor adventure theater, mountain bike classes and courses that you could take, a mountain bike track that you could ride on, and even a rock wall that you could climb.
So check this bike out. I just took this thing for a spin and man, I'm telling you, electric bikes is where it's at. That right there is pretty badass. And you've got pedal assist. Yeah, if you want it. Right, so yep. you, you can still pedal it. Yep. Or you can just be full on lazy and go, how fast? Uh, 33. 33. And the throttle's dominant, so if you have it set up for pedal assist, the throttle still is first. So. Dude, that is sweet, man. The bike's cool, but I'm looking for a American-made electric bike, and I haven't found one yet. So if you know one, leave a comment down below.